Now, as the crisis over Atiku's running mate worsened, the chairman of the People's Democratic Party Board of Trustees, Senator Walid Jibrin, said the party had set up a nine-member committee to beg Governor Wike. Now, sequel to his victory at the PDP convention, where he beat Wike and other contenders uh, to the presidential ticket, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar had nominated Governor Okowa as his running mate, despite the re recommendations of Wike by a 17-man committee set up by the party. Now, the party had raised another panel headed by Atiku to pacify the aggrieved governor and prevail on him not to leave the party. Well, joining me to discuss this development are Ezekiel Nyaitok, he's the ADC governorship candidate in Akwaibom State, and Charles Otu, a political analyst, also Michael Achimugu, who is a media consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thanks for having us. Great. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Nyaitok. This is interesting. The matter keeps brewing. As at last week, I, I was um, privileged to speak to the special advisor to, uh, former special advisor to the governor of River State, um, Mr. Uh, Chris Itamunola, and he did speak uh, about how he felt his uh, principal uh, had been treated as to the dropping of Wiki and the preference of the governor of Delta State, Governor Ifanyo Kowa, um, after the, a 17-man committee had picked he, Wiki, uh, to be a, a runner with uh, the uh, former vice president. Now, it's a matter that many have said um, was something done in bad taste, and many would argue that um, the party's flag bearer does have a choice in picking whoever he thinks would work better was him. But do you uh, think that Governor Wike was poorly or badly treated? Um, the very first thing I would like to tell us is that we have, we're coming to a point where you need to draw the line between politics and governance. Now, the uh, article is in a very um, tight situation because at his age, and a man who has wished for so long to be the president of Nigeria, it's suddenly dawning on him that there's something called posterity. And that posterity will come not from winning an election, but by good governance and creating an impact. Hmm. On account of this, he's had to make a difficult choice as to who his running mate would be. Politically, it is expedient that he picks a man like Mr. Wike, because Wike seems to enjoy the goodwill of the party, understandably. At a stage, we was effectively the national chairman. He was effectively the national secretary, and he was effectively the spokesperson of the PDP. He was a one-man riot squad. So, if you want to think in terms of reward, he more than deserves to be so rewarded. But if you look at governance. And I, I, I am a governorship candidate. And I'm thinking of the sort of person that I would like to have for a deputy governor. When you define that office, it has to be somebody who knows that playing the second fiddle is not out of place. In fact, as much as thinking of being the leader is an offense for a deputy governor, and the same goes for a vice president. Within that context, we all know that Mr. Wicke has all it takes to fit in the mold of a leader. He would have been a good presidential candidate. He is in control, he's in charge, he knows what he wants to do, he goes for it. Imagine a situation him seeing what he would want to do, and his, and his principal says, no, 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 I don't want it that way. Mr. Wick is not going to take any of that. So within the context, 
I think that has informed, you know, juxtapose that with a man like Mr. Uh, Okowa. Incidentally, Mr. Okowa happens to be somebody I know so well. He would be an excellent vice president because he is a very humble person and he's an extremely wise person. He is one who is not extremely opinionated and he is someone who knows how to get down and get the work done. He's not one who seeks attention. So in the whole of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if the, I was to recommend one person and he would accept that recommendation, that person would be Mr. Okowa because of these things are put. He understands what it means to be loyal. He was there with, uh, when he was secretary to government and uh, he worked under uh, my very good uh, friend, the former governor. And he, he, the, I know the meetings I attended with him and how he fed to his boss with all acts of loyalty. So I think that the PDP should, there's, there's no absolute need for Mr. Okowa to be, uh, Mr. Wicked to be pacified. He deserves every act of pacification. Uh. And at the risk of even giving other parties, you know that I'm in a different party, at the risk of giving them a game plan, I would say that in the larger interest of any possibility of them getting into power, they are better off by miles with Mr. Um, Okoma as the vice president. Okay. I'm coming to you now, Michael. Why should a whole political party set up a committee to appease, uh, for the want of a better word, beg the governor of River State? Um, I mean, there are other people who participated in that election. Um, and, of course, he lost out. Um, many would say he was treated badly. Some other people say... Oh, at least he should have reached out to him, even though he was, he was not going to pick him as a running mate. But all of this, you know, should be done hush-hush. But now it's becoming a big deal. And then we're hearing subtle threats as to what might be the result of this. But I'm asking, why do you think a Governor Wiki needs to be appeased? Um, thank you very much, Mary. Uh, good evening, everybody. It speaks to the dishonesty and gross arrogance of the PDP presidential candidate, you know, that this situation has gotten to this level. Um, it's also misleading um, the position of, you know, the first speaker, because you see, when you break glassware and try to end it, you could mend it to use it again, but it will never be the same. And this thing that's occurring in PDP is like deja vu because the same thing happened in 2018. The rumors were that the agreement had been Ike Ekwemadu for vice president, and then suddenly Peter Obi was selected. And if you remember, there was a lot of controversy arising from that situation that hurt the party, you know, in the Southeast. Why would you set up a committee? Why would you even allow a committee to be set up if you weren't going to take their recommendation? If you have the power to just select your VP, uh, VP then you might as well have done it without you know, giving anybody any false hope. And if you had made up your mind along the line for whatever reason, I wouldn't pick this guy anymore. VK has done enough in the party to deserve respect, to be told, look, I'm not going to pick you for this and this and this reason, you know. That's the least you could do for a man of his caliber. I also do not agree with this stereotype that Wiki will not make a good uh, uh, follower, you know, in, this, in the context of a VP. Because I think Wiki has been uh, Minister of State or so before in this same country, and he did not have any issues with, with, his, with his minister. I think that the man is more pragmatic than giving credit for, apart from that. This fear that Wiki will be too much a handful for his boss is uh, misguided because the Nigeria, by the constitution, Nigeria's president is the most powerful in the world. You know, and as uh, there are, there are the, the position of the vice president is well taken care of. He has 
his own responsibilities and duty. I do not think that Wiki would have posed the kind of problem that people assume he would have posed. But by and large, the process by which they have arrived here is the problem. Well, I feel for Wiki. He's a very loyal party man, and I don't see him going, being able to go anywhere else. Perhaps it could be why he has been treated this way. Oh, he has no choice. At the end of the day, we'll beg him, you know, we'll say sorry to him, he'll accept, and then we'll move on. But there's a danger to these things. In 2019, I was with the article camp, you know, and there was a lot of betrayal from in-house. And some of it, you know, was created by issues like this. You can beg a man and he can tell you yes. Let's hope that when he says yes, that he means it and works with you without sabotaging you behind mm. your back. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Otu, I'm coming to you now. Just stemming from what um, Michael um, is, uh, is saying here, uh, talking about the fact that um, Wike may not go anywhere. Now, some people would say, look, he has a river state to win. Let's not forget, as we speak, river state is a PDP state. Uh, if he were to move to another state, uh, to another party, I'm wondering what party that would be. Um, what are the chances that he would be able to win river state? Let's not also forget that the the former minister uh, of transportation is the leader of the APC in the state, and there has been an ongoing uh, struggle for the soul of River State. Um, I, I also want to go back to what I said at the beginning. I spoke with um, a former aide of the governor, and he said categorically that the governor was treated badly, and whatever his decision is, they will stand by it solely, meaning it could be, we could read all kinds of meanings to it. But I'm asking you, what kind of threat does a weak pose if he decides to leave the PDP? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much to my fellow discussants in this year. The, the issue about uh, PDP and weak is that of um, uh, you, you literally say that the party is imploding on him. And the holder of the ticket, that is Atika Ubaka. That's, if you watch the reactions of uh, Governor Winke so far, uh, you could see a man who, like the last speaker said, uh, was just literate. Uh, for all that Winke stood for in the party, he is a first to record. Uh, there were times the same ticket holder, Atika Ubaka, was, was in Dubai for months. And there were too much fights, too much wranglings, too much need to show opposition, for the PDP to show opposition. So it will not be a party as it is seen now that failed as a ruling party, a governing party, and also in opposition. It was wicked that took the board of the horse and stood by the party and wicked challenged the status quo in those very prime moments. And the Nigerians will not forget that. Neither will uh, people of River State do. Now, for Mwike, who we know his antecedents, who we know his uh, character person, who we know his personality, that is a man, who, if he decides to take a plunge, he does it so decisively and wholeheartedly. Uh, for such a man, you cannot be asking the threat he poses. He poses so much threat, of course. Even if he decides to just work for the governorship candidate of his party, which is what I would say is what is keeping some of the governors in PDP now. Even if he decides to work for uh, the PDP for the sake of successor, uh, there is no amount of uh, begging that will make Tuke devote himself the way I see him, you know, committedly. He's interested in PDP returning to power, but uh, what is in it for him is important. For me, the action of the PDP I to set up a committee to plead with him is, uh, for me, related. Because if you didn't take the man into cognizance, if you didn't recognize, you, have, you, you must have had the reports where people were saying, look, the PDP, uh, the PDP stakeholders, some of them are saying that uh, Wiki is too casual, too loud mattered, loud mattered, is too noisy. Uh, and yet, yeah, these are the qualities that the opposition needed. Keep a check on the ruling party. So, if he provided those, uh, 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 you know, uh, values in the time of need of the PDP, it was only meant for that. Even if for any reason the PDP wanted to dump him aside the way they have done for uh, Ifanyokoa, that he should have been taken into cognizance. That's, 
this committee that is coming now should have gone ahead to even say there is no contest, that this is what is in it for you. And uh, a week would have taken that. Hmm. Let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Nyaitug. Still talking about the dangers that this might pose for the party. Um, the first committee was set up. The second now is being headed by the party's flag bearer, um, talking about uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Now, Michael make, made a case saying that this is a, a, a form of arrogance on the part of the former Vice President, and he's seen this play out before. Could this cost the PDP that position, uh, that seat that is very, in fact, the most coveted as we speak right now for 2023? Mr. Yaito, you need to unmute Sorry, yourself yes, so we yes. can hear you. I noticed I was muted. I yes. didn't want any distractions. Thank you. Uh, when you look at the current trend of events in Nigeria, I think that PDP is just trying to put the nail on the coffin. There's a complete mindset change and PDP had enough time to move into the gap that was created by the ineptitude and lackluster governance of APC. That people were just sick, tired. The current wave for the third, you know, uh, what they call the, the third force, which I would rather refer to as the alternate force. Is, is on account of how unhappy people really are the AP. Now, that was enough time for PDP to rebrand itself, reposition itself in the minds of the people where we are tired of politics. You know, my my, my father used to say, there is too much uh, rice in this sand. Hmm. There is too much... What we are supposed to have as, as governance is politics, just spiced with some, some governance here and there. Instead of governance, with some bit of politics here and there. And PDP has not been able to really give the Nigerian nation that animation of a new body that is willing to go in the new direction and take us out from this ignoble position of the poverty capital of the world. Now, that was bad enough. For them to come and have this internal crisis is something that, for me, is just taking themselves out very easily. APC have already taken themselves out because of antecedents. What will you campaign on? Continuity? Continuing what? So I think that um, PDP is losing that possibility of coming up as, look at what happened in Ekiti. Ek ek it is almost unthinkable that PDP could not even come second. I mean, it's unthinkable. They're fundamentally wrong. So I think that what is going on now, I don't know if there's a lot of, but what I know for a fact is that a lot of PDP people at the highest level are talking very, very silently to those of us in the alternate forces. You know, I don't want to be too particular about my party ADC. And I can tell you one or two things directly because I'm directly involved. But right down to the state levels, people are just disenchanted with this PDP, APP thing. And the least you could do is at least give us a distance to uh, uh, I think we're having a feedback there from somebody. So uh, I do not know whose um, TV is on. It's affecting our conversation. So please kindly mute yourself so we can hear what Mr. Yaitok is saying. Uh, Mr. Yaitok, can you quickly wrap up on your thoughts? Yeah, basically that, that PDP has failed to take advantage of an open field that they had on account of the, the very terrible governance of APC nationally and down the line. And on account of that, the third force or the alternate force are coming up and they are making the waves because Nigerians are tired. So okay. PDP is not helping itself to show a good showing at least coming second or so with all the internal wranglings that they are having. Uh, Michael, the party, certain per persons in the party are, are, are saying, are pushing for a replacement of Governor Kowa with a Governor Wiki, which seems like a mirage for some. And some are saying, 
this, if this were even to be a case, if this were to be the solution to the problem that can, this one way or the other, solidify the place of the PDP in retaining the presidency at the end of the day come 2023, or could it cause further crisis within the party if a replacement was even thought of in the first instance? Oh, well, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a horrible situation for the PDP. Replacing the VP now <laughs> places them in a horrible situation with you know, Okowa and his own people, because every politician has his loyalists and supporters too, you know, uh, like uh, Mr. Nyaetuk, is an admirer of um, Okowa, for instance, you know. Um, the, 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 my takeaway from this is that the PDP has shown that it also has a critical decision-making problem. And so either way, now as it is, they are, they are really, really in, in, in hot soup. Um, in a way, I'm glad because this demystifies the, the, the aura of perfection, you know, and sainthood that supporters have tried to, you know, paint around their candidates. You know, now we know that the PDP presidential candidate is human, um, is not a saint, can have problems making solid decisions, and also has a little bit of a, 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 an integrity problem, I must say. You know, um, I don't wish the party well. I wish well my, my position is with Nigerians and whoever the best leader, you know, for Nigerians will be, I pray such a person wins at the polls next year. But the PDP do not have my sympathy. Either way, Wiki Okowa now, it's a very messy situation for them. All right, finally, um, Mr. Otu, um, where do you see this going? Um, I mean, whether the committee has comes to an agreement of sorts, but, uh, we've seen many presidential aspirants, uh, rather candidates, visit with Governor Wiki, and many people ask the question um, if Governor Wiki will ever move to these parties or what these people are courting him for. But what do we see? How do we see this play out? Let's do a little prediction game here. How does this play out at the end of the day? Does this work out in the interest of the PDP? Uh, uh, or, I mean, looking at the body language of that committee being led by uh, former Pres Vice President Atiku, or do we see it going in a different way, knowing that, you know, surprises always happen when it's leading up to an election uh, cycle? You need to unmute yourself uh, quickly. Okay. Thank you very much, Marianne. The situation the PDP has found itself so much uh, agrees with some of the predictions some of us have made earlier. Uh, when the party was more desperate to, uh, instead of maybe positioning themselves for, for, for acceptability, wider acceptability, the party was more interested in still doing things the old way, in mm. the old order, in the old fashion of health leader who brings what and who takes what. And then for, for me, like the last speaker said, uh, they, don't, they really don't have my sympathy. Yes. Whichever way it goes, what is certain is that the good leader should have come from the PDP ticket from the south, that, is, that, that, that could have come to article the way the party had it in 2019, may not be on the way. It may not come. Hmm. Because essentially you shake the antecedents of uh, Governor Wiki. If you have, if you have the Wiki article, for instance, so you're saying you, you that even, sure that, so you're uh, say, I'm sorry, so you're saying that even with Anokoa, who seems to, um, not just be in Delta, but is able to reach out to the Southeast, just saying that there is not enough goodwill with an Okoa on that ticket for an article, especially in the South. Is that what you're insinuating? Well, I, I don't see a, a, a reasonable goodwill. I don't, I don't even see a goodwill on that. Because Ibos had been saying it, 100 people had done it to the ears of anybody who wants to listen, who cares to listen, that Ibos should not play a second fiddle in this election. Okay. And if if Adokowa is evil as we believe he is, I is asking the boys to take 
and give you the kind of support they gave to the to be vice president, president as articles vice president to 2019, he will certainly not get it because he will be in the ticket. Okay. Okay. And well, uh, he was uh, ready to plunge in, swim and think with him, so as to at least prove a point that they can be relevant politically. So, okay. uh, in the end, at the end of the situation, at the end of the whole deal in 2023, uh, I see a PDP, PDP, a, I see a loose loose scenario for the PDP because of wow. the current uh, group rate as well. It's, it all emphasizes the, the fact that people were correct in their predictions that it, had the PDP looked into this constitution and sold officially its uh, uh, presidential position to the South East, uh, perhaps it could have uh, it could have had a very strong rallying base. Uh, you you may say like people have argued that. It is but, but finally, people. because we have to go yes, quickly. But, uh, this time around, the, the South Easterners have awoken and they are showing me that the activities they are doing now, and uh, voter registration and all of that. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Ezekiel Nyaitok is the ADC governorship candidate in a Kwaibom stage. Charles Otto is a political analyst. And Michael Achimogu is a media consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Fingers crossed we'll keep our eyes on the developments within the People's Democratic Party. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we will be discussing the Kwan Kwaso Peter Obi situation. He's saying he's offering him a position of the vice president ahead of the 2023 election. Stay with us.